Hi everyone, it's Hope Yoder with Embellish, Funda Embellish Maker Fundamental Video 8, where we're going to talk about color sorting, transform, view, and the social media. So let's close this all out, and we're going to start by opening a new page. So if your software looks like this, you can come under File and New, and we're going to open a design. I'm going to select from my Roses and Arrows embroidery collection this beautiful circular rose collection and I'm going to select it all and I'm also going to group it by coming under Modify and Group and I'm going to duplicate it. Let me scroll out smaller and if I was going to stitch this so I have two of these you can see now I have 14 colors. I'm going to select all of these and under color sort, what happens is it's brought it down to seven colors. So that's color sort. Let's come on into um, the transform button. And so with this collection, I'm gonna get something that you can see a little bit better. So let me get a new page and I will open another design from that collection. Let's see if we can find a nice, we have some nice large bouquets of roses in here. We'll take this yellow rose, do this to 3D, perfect. So now with this design, I'm going to group it all by selecting it, right click and group. And if I wanted to flip it horizontally, that's the icon. If I wanted to go up and down, rotate it left or right. And on this icon is trim, where you have two items on a path. We'll come back to that. Weld and intersect. So I'll use some simple shapes for this. You also have break apart and you have join. So let's go to another screen so I can show you those functions. So we're on another screen now and I'm going to choose design and just draw some artwork. I'm gonna draw a rectangle and we'll fill it in with color. I'll draw a circle. We'll change that to a different color and we'll draw a triangle and we'll fill this in with an orange color. Now this is artwork, it is not stitches. So we'll do some functions in artwork first. I'm gonna go back under the transform and I'm going to select all of the items and notice when I select all, all of these icons become available. Now everything that you're seeing with the letter N is because I own Craft and Cut software and when I installed Embellish Maker, all of my Craft and Cut functions install automatically and load and are fully functioning inside of Embellish, which is awesome. If you don't see these icons with the letter N, that's because you don't have um, Craft and Cut installed on your computer. So we're not gonna talk about these right now. Let's go back to trim. You see the triangles and the, the triangle square and oval that I made and to trim them I'm going to select trim and look what happens it actually trims out all of the pieces that overlapped so let's undo that and you can see I have them back together again now I'm going to select all items and show you what the weld is when I weld this together they become one object Oh, it looks like a toilet seat cover. All right, let me undo that. So that is the weld function and the intersect function is going to get rid of everything except the three parts that overlap or intersect each other. And that's gonna give us a little weird triangle and everything else goes away. So notice that worked with artwork. Let's go ahead and select all items. And now if I wanted to join the items, here's a better way to show you what 
join is. If I wanted to pretend like this triangle was a cookie cutter and my cookie dough is the blue rectangle, I'm going to cut out a triangle hole inside of the blue. I'm going to select both items and I'm going to select join, selected pass, and you can see that now I have a triangle cut outside or inside of my shape. So I undo that so you can see that again. We're going to select them all and join them. Now if I break apart, let's go back, so let me go a little slower, I apologize. So to cut a triangle shape hole out of the blue rectangle, I'm going to select join. If I unfill this with color, you can see it's just one object now. If I fill it back in with color, I've cut a hole out of it. Now the break up selected path means I really have two lines, this outer line and the inner line. And if I select break up, you want to move one outside of the other, then I have my two shapes back. I've broken them apart. Kind of cool, right? So we could do this. And I'm going to join them together to get them back. Rather than hitting undo, I can just give me the outer and the inner shape. Let me change this back to a different color. And now if I turn these all into digitizing stitches, what is interesting, I'll select them all and come under the convert icon and just fill, make them a standard fill. And now when I zoom in, you can see that they're stitches instead of artwork. Now, what happens when I try to overlap them? And then I'll select all items. And let's try these tools again. <coughs> Excuse me. We can close out all of the functions except the ones that we're using. Notice now that I have it turned into stitches, these icons are not functioning, which tells me they're simply for artwork. I do have the join, which turns it back into artwork and a break apart. So the transform functions of trim, intersect, weld, join, and break apart are for artwork only. All right, now let's go back to filling this in with stitches and we'll kind of zoom in and let's go over view. Well, actually, let's go back to transform and they're in stitches and we've talked about this in previous videos, but when I select this in my properties window, I see the type of fill pattern it is. Anywhere you see a drop down arrow, don't be afraid to change something. Notice I've created a zigzag pattern. Hey, that looks pretty cool. Let me select this icon, I'm sorry, not icon, these stitches, and let's choose pattern 5 and apply. We also have underlay, so if I wanted even a full lattice underlay, I can select that. What I want you to look at are the stitches. I have 14,437. When I apply full underlay, I'm going to jump up to 1,600 stitches. So you've got a lot of control over in the properties window. Also in the sequence window, that shows you your color values. So you've got um, the three different color stops when you embroider. Down here, we have our slow redraw. And you can let this play out or we can kind of do it in a fast forward motion. Now looking at that, we'll close out the transform and go to 3D, the view mode. We can view this 3D or not 3D. The backdrop tool we spoke about in uh, one of the earlier fundamentals. But basically a backdrop tool allows me to put artwork in the background so that if I wanted 
to make something or try to digitize over an image, I could do that. To get rid of the backdrop tool, you're going to simply hide it. We also have grid. You can turn the grid on, turn it off, or if you go under Tools and Preferences, you have even more control with your grid. You can go over horizontal and vertical inches, the spacing, the colors, snap to grid on or off. So you've got all of that. And while we're in here in Preferences, let's go ahead and talk about the other options. Format. What is the machine format that you require most of the time? It'll default to that. The hoop bracket location. Do you load your hoop on your machine on the left, top, bottom, or right? Color matching. Convert to outlines when you open. So if you tend to do a lot of um, editing and different things, you might want to select that you always want it to convert to outlines. I don't. I want it to stay deselected. The environment tells you inches or metric millimeters. You want to auto save after five minutes or one minute. The program for the auto artwork wizard, MS Paint. You can show the cutting mat and that if you have a um, craft and cut. I have craft and cut, so I have that option. We go back here under view if you don't own craft and cut then you're not going to probably be able to make that change i'm going to go back and let's go under tools and keep exploring what we have here for our environment for our view then you have your grid which we've talked about auto basting which we've talked about how far away you want to baste color sort, enter maximum allowable colors to overlap, you can use the default, and your theme, we have a light theme, or if I change that to a dark theme, notice the background changes. I'm going to turn my cutting mat off, and I think I like working in the lighter theme, is a little less distracting, so we'll change that. So those are your tools and your preferences going to get rid of the cutting mat. And as I've stated before in many of the videos, anything with the letter N is a functioning capability to all craft and cut owners. It loads inside. Let me come back and get a new page by going under File, New. I'm going to get rid of my mat. And I'm going to open one of the pretty designs from the Roses and Arrows. And let's come down here to corner rows. I'm going to open that in my window. I want to get rid of my mat. I must have changed something in my tools preferences. Let's see. Environment. Cutting mat. I don't want to show the cutting mat. Perfect. Now if I wanted to change something like the inner color of the flower, if you want to get rid, I was doing a slow redraw earlier, click on the color palette to get rid of that. And if I want to change the color, I can do that. I'm going to select it and change the color a little bit. I can put it in 3D mode. Actually, I think I liked it better before. And we'll put this in 3D mode. And if I wanted to share my masterpiece that I've been working on, let's talk about the social media icons. You can select this, and the first time you use them, you're going to log into your Facebook, your Twitter, or your Pinterest account, and you'll stay logged in until you tell the software you want to log out. So I've already done that on Facebook and let's just see what happens. I'm going to use the current design that's on my screen or I can open another design and I can say something about this. All right, and I'm going to put it on my timeline or a page that I manage. So on my timeline, I'm going to select OK. 
and it tells me it's posted successfully. So we'll pause in a moment and I'll show you what that looks like. So I've already posted this on my social media. Let me show you what my um, personal Facebook page looks like. And here you can see it has posted this and it says embellish maker. It shows what software program I was using. Love the new corner rose from Roses and Arrows by Designs by Hope Yoder. So it posts that on my page. And that is what the social media does for you, whether it's Pinterest, Twitter, or Facebook. So here I've taken you through almost all of the icons inside of Embellish Maker. Stay tuned for the last fundamental video where we'll talk about Craft and Cut and using it inside of Embellish Maker.